The graduation address gives us the opportunity to hear from a distinguished member of our alumni community, and we're fortunate today to have that address delivered by Dr. David Curley. Professor Curley is an internationally recognised atmospheric scientist and expert on climate change and climate variability. He's currently the chief scientist in the CSIRO in their Climate Science Centre. As a Monash science student, he combined his studies in applied mathematics and physics with his personal interest with the Monash Bushwalking Club and pivoted his career towards his passion for the natural environment, weather and climate. Professor Curley has, was a, um, a dedicated academic at Monash University for over 20 years. He also completed his Doctor of Philosophy in Meteorology at the University of Reading in England and returned to work for CSIRO. He was awarded an ARC Federation Fellowship where he further studied the impact on climate change. Professor Curley is passionate about science and the environment and is one of Australia's leading scientists involved in communication on climate change. It gives me great pleasure to invite you, David, to deliver the graduation address. Thank you, Deputy Chancellor. And it's a real honour for me to be back in Robert Blackwood Hall. I remember sitting as you graduates are now, 45 years ago in December of 1976, when I graduated with a Bachelor of Science degree, having been an undergraduate at Monash and finishing my degree then. I recognise then it was just a science degree and it was a science graduation. And what I'm going to try to do today, very briefly, is to make what I'm going to say relevant to the graduates in medicine, nursing and health sciences, just as relevant to you all as it is to graduates in science. What I'm going to do is talk about change, because a lot's changed here at Monash University over the last 45 years. I would hardly recognise the names of the streets, the buildings, as I walked through. It's all changed. A lot has changed in the world over the last 45 years as well, and a lot more is going to change in the future. In fact, I'm going to start by acknowledging the traditional owners of this country, the Kulin Nation, and all the countries of the traditional First Peoples here in Australia, the traditional owners who have managed country sustainably in Australia for thousands of generations. Because they've managed dramatic changes. They are the longest living Indigenous peoples in any civilization anywhere in the world. And they managed country sustainably from the last ice age, essentially more than 20,000 years ago, now to the interglacial period. And temperatures now are more than five degrees warmer globally than they were in the last glacial period. Sea level is 100 metres higher than it was 20,000 years ago. And yet, Indigenous peoples, the traditional owners, and their culture, songlines and history show that they managed to live through those dramatic climate changes and those dramatic sea level. 20,000 years ago, Port Phillip Bay was grazing country. And if you look at the bottom of Port Phillip Bay, you can still see the river valleys in the bottom of Port Phillip Bay. That's what land was like 
prior to the warming from the interglacial, sorry, from the glacial period to the interglacial. So we know that things have changed. I want to congratulate you on completing all your degrees and surviving through some of the unexpected changes that no one anticipated or none of you anticipated due to COVID. Yes, there were people warning about the anticipated pandemics, but they couldn't tell you precisely when it was going to happen. And yes, you have all been successful in graduating and managing change through those COVID interrupted studies that you've had over the last two years. It's interesting when you look forward, you are at the start of some very dramatic changes in your lives. You'll be looking forward to new jobs or potentially to further study. You'll be looking forward to some travel opportunities, assuming that the interstate and international travel barriers are still removed. You'll be looking forward to spending time with your families, more time than you have over the last two years. You, some of you will be looking forward to some difficult decisions. What are you going to do? Where are you going to live? It's important when you're thinking about those sorts of decisions that you'll have to make, to think about it in terms of the opportunities, not the challenges. Think about it in the context of what good things can happen. Think about it with a positive view. Sometimes we describe it as a glass half full. If you worry, if you overanalyze your choices and your decisions, you'll end up stuck with uncertainty. When I finished my studies 45 years ago, I was stuck with a difficult choice. Should I take the job that I was offered to go and work in the Australian Antarctic Division and spend a year overwintering in Antarctica? What an opportunity for someone who was interested in science and the environment. Or should I take the other opportunity a scholarship to go and study in the United Kingdom. All expenses paid three year trip to the United Kingdom with a potential future career. I thought about it. I was sure I'd get an opportunity in the future then to go to Antarctica and I'm still waiting on that opportunity to go to Antarctica. I chose to go to the United Kingdom and that was a fantastic choice for lots and lots of different reasons. And maybe I'll still get to Antarctica sometime in the future. We have booked a trip in 2023, my wife and I. So look, good things come. But that's more than enough about my life. I don't want to waste time on thinking about the past. I want to look at the future. And I can guarantee you two things. First of all, prediction is difficult, particularly when it's about the future. But there are two things that I'm certain of. The first is, that whatever job you take after you've finished your studies, it will not be the job that you have when you retire. In fact, you will have multiple jobs over your careers. And some of the jobs that you have when you retire, whenever that is in the future, won't even be jobs that exist now. I'm currently finishing up and about to retire in a job that did not exist 10 years ago. So you will be looking at jobs and you will be changing your jobs multiple times in your career. I guarantee you that. 
There's one other thing that I'm going to guarantee you, and that is that in the future, in 40, sorry, in 20 years' time, in 2040, the global climate will continue to change as it has over the last 20 years. 45 years ago, when I graduated, the carbon dioxide concentration in the atmosphere measured at Cape Grim in the northwest of Tasmania, where the wind blows from the west and the nearest land to Cape Grim outside of Tasmania is actually to the east in South America, not to the west. So it's very clean air that blows across Cape Grim. It measures what's called baseline air conditions. The carbon dioxide concentration was only 330 parts per million. Now, 45 years later, it's 430 parts per million and rising rapidly due to human-caused emissions of greenhouse gases. We know those emissions are continuing and in 20 years' time, it will have risen another 40 parts per million. In 20 years, global temperatures will be around two degrees above pre-industrial levels. We're already at more than one degree above pre-industrial levels. As I said, one of the things that I'll guarantee you is that Australian temperatures will be hotter in 20 years than they are now. The sorts of conditions that were experienced in the summer of 2019 and 2020, which were absolutely unprecedented and led to the extreme bushfires and massive damage across southern and eastern Australia. Damage to ecosystems, damage to agriculture, killed many people. Unfortunately, those conditions will become the norm. Not every year, but the temperatures of 2019 will become normal by the 2040s. That means that the impacts of climate change will get significantly worse. Every degree of warming from one degrees to two degrees will double the magnitude and the intensity of the impacts. To manage those impacts, all the countries of the world have agreed to limit global warming to only two degrees and to invest in adaptation to climate change, to manage the impacts, the unavoidable impacts of climate change. We know that it's going to happen. There will be many more jobs in the health impacts of climate change, in the science impacts of climate change, in managing the impacts as well as in reducing the emissions of greenhouse gases from human activity. And it's only by managing the unavoidable impacts as well as avoiding the unmanageable climate change. And the only way we can avoid the unmanageable climate change is by limiting global warming, by limiting greenhouse gas emissions by transitioning rapidly to a zero carbon economy. And that zero carbon economy will lead to massive extra jobs. Some jobs that don't exist already and some jobs that are gonna be associated with some of the areas of PhDs. Some of the PhD graduates talked about new energy solutions, health solutions, there was a master's degree in environment and sustainability. All of those areas, as well as the health areas, will be needed to address climate change. Some of you will find new opportunities for jobs in addressing either the impacts of climate change, but everything that you, your families, and what happens in Australia and in the world will be addressing the two dramatic global issues. One is COVID and the other one is climate change. You are aware much more 
of COVID because of your experiences over the last two years. Some of you will be aware of the impact of climate change and how to address it. You will be much more familiar with that over the next 20 years. I want to finish up. Let me say first that the most important thing for you to do now is to recognise that completing your degrees has only been possible by the enormous efforts of the people that have supported you in your degrees. That means the academic and support staff here at the university, as well as your families, your friends and your other students that have supported you all through your degrees. It is really important to thank them and recognise them and there will be a part in this degree ceremony to do that. But the other thing I want to finish on, the one thing that I am certain about is the certainty of change. Change is inevitable. Some jobs will disappear, there will be more jobs. It's important to recognise that if you want to manage change in the future, having a positive attitude will help you manage change. I wish you the best in your future, wherever it may take you. I am sure it will bring you changes, but you will be able to look forward to those and manage them. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Carroly, and uh, I think the importance of reminding us of the evidence base upon which those challenges have to be faced up to and addressed, that's the opportunity of the challenges ahead for all of you uh, today. So rely on the evidence. <clears throat>